Hello, welcome to another episode of Beer Man's Noble Beer Views. Today I have a beer from uh, Casita Cerveceria. They're out of Farmville, North Carolina. Um, I don't think I've done a beer that was just from them on this channel before. I've definitely done ones that uh, were collaborations with them. I know Resident Culture's done several collaborations with them. Um, I don't remember if I've done any other collab <coughs> beers with them, but this is one that's, uh, well, this is actually a collaboration with New Anthem, but this was made at where they brew out of, which is at um, Duck Rabbit. Um, so they are technically a gypsy brewer, but I don't think they really move around. They just... They used to actually brew out of Hill Farmstead, and now he's brewing out of Duck Rabbit, which is a big change. Um, but that's kind of how I knew about these guys, even before they were in North Carolina, because I knew it was like a, you know, it, it was, it's not, it's a different person. It wasn't Sean Hill making the beers, but I knew it was being brewed, brewed at Hill Farmstead. So obviously he was learning some stuff from Sean, which is not a, a bad guy to learn some brewing techniques from. So this beer is called uh, Zeitgeist. And it is a uh, West Coast style IPA. It is 7.6 ABV. Um, it the malt bill is two row Carapils and Crystal Twenty, so pretty light. Um, a little bit of Crystal, which makes sense for West Coast. Uh, and it's hopped with Simcoe, Amarillo, Centennial, Chinook, and Columbus. So that's about as uh, dank and old school west coast american ipa as you can get um you know sans maybe having like cascade in there so <clears throat> this is uh i'm guessing this is gonna be uh, a bitter dank uh, ipa so i'm pretty excited for it not had this before i believe this is a uh, new i mean it is a fresh beer but i don't think they've brewed it before usually collaborations only get done one time so we'll see <clears throat> pretty cool label there too I like that and I admittedly I, I have had a lot of collaborations with Casita because they are gypsy brewers so they do a lot of collabs with other with Charlotte breweries and uh, Raleigh breweries and Asheville breweries um, but I haven't had too many beers that were actually brewed by them so I'm kind of excited to give this one a go <clears throat> so you can see it pours a um really nice darker golden to uh like bright orange like peach skin color with a a small but fluffy and staying um white head <clears throat> uh that is definitely a uh, west coast style but it's not it's not super dank um it's actually pretty citrusy so you know it's 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 on the fruity side but it's on the citrusy side it's not like the tropical fruits you know the peach pineapple passion fruit that you get from some of the newer newer hops um it's a lot of uh a lot of grapefruit and pine which is uh you know pretty reminiscent of that's the west coast style i do get a little bit of uh like um caramel toasted notes but it's it's really minimal um it's definitely mostly just all hop aroma which is great so we'll see what it tastes like that's nice uh that's really nice so it definitely has, you know, a uh, a, su a substantial bitterness. I would it's not. I wouldn't say aggressive, but it's substantial bitterness, you know, compared to the everyday beer. But for a West Coast IPA, it's not super bitter. Um, it does have a little bit of that drying, like candied orange, uh, doughy quality on the back end. That, like it's it's has a. A titch of that caramel sweetness, and then it just finishes like really quick, really dry. I would say the flavor leans more towards that piney, resinous character, and less on the um, less on the citrus. But there is, uh, you know, it's some 
sometimes when I have certain West Coast IPAs, you know, the bitterness is substantial, but sometimes it comes off as just like regular alpha acid bitterness. It sometimes it's almost like because of the grapefruit flavor is there, it's almost reminds me of like a grapefruit pith, like you're chewing on a grapefruit peel, um, which isn't necessarily the best thing, but it's appropriate for this style. Um, yeah, I'm saying I, what I mean by that is I, I like it in the beer and it's appropriate for the style, but would I want to just chew on grapefruit peels, peels all day? Absolutely not. Sorry for that pause. Apparently my uh, TV decided to uh, start playing for no reason, even though I had it paused. Um, yeah, I really like this. It's uh, definitely a classic West Coast IPA. Uh, there's honestly nothing, nothing about this that is I would pick up as even like a slight off flavor. Uh, super, super clean. It is... Like I said, I got that little bit of caramel sweetness, but even for a West Coast IPA, it is pretty, pretty dry. Um, that is the one thing, like, I used to love the cl the classic West Coast IPAs, you know, ten, five, ten years ago. But the ones that are coming back now, to me, it's, it's not just bringing back a, cl a classic style that I used to like. It's taking it and making it better and re reforming it and... They're, they're taking, breweries are taking what they learned from these hazy IPAs and then folding it back into a West Coast style. So, you know, they're getting that that pop of, of bitterness mid-palate, but then, like, fermenting them so super dry that that really distinguishes them from the New England style IPAs. Uh, so, you know, you don't get, a lot of these, like, you don't get a malt bomb after a month because... They're super clean, but they don't have that much, like, caramel malt to them either. Uh, <clears throat> so usually when these when these newer West Coast IPAs get old, they kind of just taste like a, a shell of themselves. They don't really get super malty because there's, there wasn't that much of a malt base to begin with. Um, at least not, like, darker malts. Of course, two-row is still malt, but it's, it all ferments out for the most part. Uh... So that, I really like what a lot of breweries are doing right now with with this style. If they're if they're doing it right, to me they're better than some of the a lot of the classic West Coast IPAs. Um, you know, Fatheads is a good example of that. I would consider them West Coast style, even though they've always been in the Midwest. Um, but even some of the stuff that uh, Divine Barrel is doing here in Charlotte, they're they're taking that hop schedule and that dryness. And that clean, clean Pilsner base and just taking it to the nth degree where it's just so flavorful with those hops, but it's not that bitter and it's super light and easy to drink. And that's what's going on here. So I'm, I'm, I think this was like $6 for a can, but I did buy it at a place um, that was close to me that I could get it easy pickup. So that place is generally kind of expensive. So it's pro you probably find it for 5 bucks somewhere else. So... If you if you're saying this is a twenty dollar four pack or something like that, absolutely buy again. It's a very very good um, classic West Coast IPA and uh, another great beer for Casita. I just started buying their stuff consistently because I realized like man, all these collabs I'm having from them are really really good. So maybe I should just buy their stuff too. It's probably really good on their own. So that's what I'm gonna start doing, and you know, until I get a couple misses in a row, which I don't think will happen, um, I'm gonna keep buying them. So yeah, this is definitely a buy for me. That's all I got in this one, though. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, and I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks.